Feel the Fusion Productions presents The Standard Business Machines Magnuscriber Deluxe Wire Recorder. This is not a tape recorder. This is a wire recorder. This unit is from the 1940s. I don't know exactly what year, but it's from some time probably in the late 1940s. Maybe 1946, maybe 1947, 48, around there. Um, I got this unit at a flea market in New Mexico. Excuse me for a second. I have the original operating manual to this machine. The unit would have included a foot pedal, or at least optional, probably. I don't have the foot pedal for it. It was owned by Larry Hirschman, a, a high school science teacher, as it's written right there. Larry Hirschman, science teacher, high school. The schematic I do not have, which is unfortunate. But it shows you. Some, I'm sorry, I'm not showing you the best shots of this manual. Here's a more detailed picture of what the remote control would have been like. It has the microphone sitting on it. I do have the microphone. It's a crystal microphone. Even a little section talking about magnetic recording, which I will probably read into the wire recorder at some point and show it playing back that voice recording of that. Has the uh, front cover, which will hinge on there. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the machine, let the tubes warm up. This machine uses eight vacuum tubes, believe it or not. One of them, a recti I mean, one of the oh, it does have a rectifier tube in there, but one of them is a voltage regulator tube. I believe it's a voltage regulator tube. The name of it is O-43, although I couldn't seem to find out or any information on that tube, but I believe it is a voltage regulator tube. It gives off an interesting bluish color when on. I don't know if you'll be able to read that or not. Anyway, I know I always obstruct the camera because of the way the arrangements are. Here's the original microphone. You probably cannot, you can't see it because the uh, the lighting is just horrible. You can somewhat see it here. The uh, original crystal microphone with an on-off switch to control pausing which only the pausing only happens during record mode the blurry microphone is made by blur is made by Turner Turner crystal microphone it's a very good crystal microphone the model of this microphone is S S R 20 X I also have this Akai microphone, which goes to a reel-to-reel, -reel, but uh, it's a dynamic microphone, and I was trying it out for the first time with the dynamic microphone. It's pl currently plugged into the recorder. So I got this at a flea market in New Mexico for $40, which is a steal for a wire recorder like this, because these aren't very easy to find. You can pretty much easily find wire, or somewhat easily find wire recorders, but you'll usually find those Repture Chicago units, but this unit is uh, not so easy to find. I'm very fortunate to have been able to come across this machine, especially in as good cosmetic shape as it is in. As far as working is concerned, it was very much dead on arrival. I got this machine in the end of 2009. Um, soon to start 2010. If you saw the video that I did of the Dormaphone, I'm sure m m many of you have seen the video of the Dormaphone recorder. 
I got this wire recorder at the same flea market on the same day that I got the dormer phone. Anyway, um, <clears throat> this machine was full of problems when I got it. They needed some new capacitors. I didn't replace every single capacitor. I replaced it as many as I could, but some of the electrolytics um, are still fine, and I didn't have replacements on hand, I don't think, um, depending on the value. But um, I got the capacitors. Most of the capacitors are replaced. The amplifier is working, although it likes to squeal sometimes when I turn the volume up to a certain level and beyond because there's a bad connection in there somewhere, I think, which I couldn't locate, but I, I'm guessing there's a bad slaughtering joint in there. I did try reseeding the tubes. Um, also, all the tubes are good, and um, it's a three motor machine. Uh, it's got a motor for the play and record forward motion, and then it's also got a motor on each reel for the fast forward and rewind. It is full, chock full of relays. I also had to replace a couple of resistors in the unit. One of the resistors was uh, completely bad. It was the weird wire wound type, I think called a fusing resistor. It was coming apart. Some of the little wire wraps on that resistor were gone or, or coming broken out and coming gone whenever when I first powered it on. Unfortunately no variac. I don't have a variac so I just plug the thing right in, you know, see what happens. That old resistor in there was sparking and I think smoking or something. I since got it replaced. Luckily, someone in the past had written in a magic marker 15k ohms on the chassis, somewhat near to where that resistor went. So I was guessing it must be 15k ohms. So I was able to replace it. And um, I haven't been working on it too much, and for for a long time I worked on it some I think in 2010, doing the basic recapping, but I couldn't. Um, Got the rewind and fast forward to work. I made a video of this machine a while back showing how I couldn't get the rewind to fast forward to work. Well, I found out the reason why. What it is is there was a bad saw, a bad uh, relay in there. The coil on the relay was open, and that relay controlled yet another relay, which controlled the rewind and fast forward. So, um, yeah, because a relay controlling another relay. That's basically what you'll find in this in this machine because it's just got so many relays in there, lots of relays. Of course, you'll see nice sparks from those relays whenever whenever they click off because that inductive kickback of those motors, you know, and other relays it gives some nice sparks. You won't be seeing any of that on the video though. I didn't video any of that, unfortunately. I, I will be showing some a little slideshow pictures of the inside of this recorder, however, that I did take before putting it back together. And I sprayed the, the selector switch of W40 and it didn't fix that squealing problem, which I'm thinking is probably a bad soldering joint now. But um, if I kind of bang it just right, like tilt it and kind of let it down a little roughly just right, it will kind of fix the problem. So without further ado, after taking, oh my gosh, almost nine minutes, I didn't realize that much time has passed before even showing it operate, which is insane. It's the worst I've ever done as far as a demonstration for a specific recorder and describing it before talking before demonstrating it. This is a, this is by far the longest I've ever done, I think. Nine minutes. Okay, without further ado, let's uh
I'll demonstrate that squeal I was talking about. This is a wire recorder from the 1940s. This is a very interesting thing. 50 have mark this unit. testing. Uh, um, 55 mark testing dynamic microphone. Nine, short before 2010 began because it was during uh, Christmas break when visiting my uncle and cousins there. The switch will now be set to remote. I'm now making a recording on the Magnus Scriber Deluxe by Standard Business Machines, Model 160, from the 1940s. Let's see how this sounds. Beautiful. Bewildering. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. This is the most fantastic thing on planet Earth. Now, finally, decided just fails to record at all. I could try using the other microphone. Well, this microphone is still good. When I recorded the song earlier, I had to the, use the dynamic microphone and played it out of the speaker. Can use the switch to control it with this one. Testing one, two, three. Please work. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Blah, 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 blah. Testing one, two, three. Hmm. It always likes to do these strange things sometimes. I just. It's frightening because it just makes me think it's finally just decided to quit recording. So I think when I made that one recording, I had the machine apart. It's 35 at the counter, and now we're approaching, and now we are at 40 on the counter, and let's see how this sounds. What? Yes? And now we're approaching and now we are at 40 on the counter and let's see how this sounds. Miracle. Praise the Lord. I'm going to get some super glue to Chris, my brother, because he's building a 3D printer. Oh man. 
Yeah, Chris ordered a 3D printer and, well, a 3D printer kit, including 3D printed parts, which are for the 3D printer, and it's going to be amazing. Is this really giving off per 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 perfect circles? Okay. I'm making sure the aspect ratio is correct. Let's try making another recording. This time with the level all the way up. Let's see what we get. I am making a recording on the wire recorder. Will this one come in successfully? I can always check with my meter. Um, maybe I can't in the air. Um, I guess if I sit my lead into the back, if I really wanted to do it bad enough, I could check for the bias. But let's just hope it's working. By the way, the bias frequency is 28 kilohertz. And it gives 12 volts of bias to the head. Just some information for any of you who might come across a machine like this who need to know. I am making a recording on the wire recorder. Will this one come in successfully? Was that the recording I just made? I guess it was. I didn't remember exactly what I said. Okay, let's just try again with the level all the way up. The level on the wire recorder is set all the way up. But my question is, is will this record successfully? Oh. The level on the wire recorder is set all the way up. But my question is, is will this record successfully? A recording on the wire recorder. Will this one come in successfully? Oh wow, well, like the timing between those two recordings was incredible. <laughs> Basically, you just got to hear those two recordings in reverse chronological order, but they came one right after the other, like perfectly timed. <laughs> I just can't believe that. That's hilarious. <laughs> Maybe I'll just do a little bit more recording test. Let's try using the dynamic microphone again. Of course, this uses a uh, jack that's got the three connections for the uh, switched microphone. Of course, a regular microphone jack will work too. It will just be as if the switch was always on. Testing one, two, three. Run the wire recorder. Uh, I burped. I'm sorry. Get that squealing away. There we go. Let's see if you sometimes if you're being it just right, it will go. It will pretty much go away. So I'm thinking there's a bad soldering going in there, probably. So it will rewind. It will also fast forward. It has a timer. Whenever you go from fast forward to rewind, it waits a few seconds and then it activates. It waits a second or two to activate. It waits a second or two to activate after rewinding to transcribe, it's so that it will not spill and snarl and snap the wire. Although that's already happened before. I've had a tie the square knot like three times, two or three times. I am making a recording on the wire recorder. Will this one come in successfully? I want to rewind it more. 
I'm going to record where it talked about magnetic recording on the manual so that you can hear it. from the wire recorder itself that part will be done recorded off the video played back on the video okay let's now listen to unabridged from the last page of the manual magnetic recording magnetic recording the principle of magnetic recording was first discovered by Vladimir Paulson, a Danish physicist in 1898. This discovery had no practical application until the invention of the vacuum tube and the development of the modern radio. The requirements of the armed forces during the last war speeded its development for commercial use. Magnetic recording operates on a very simple principle. A sound or voice signal is converted to an electrical impulse which lays a magnetic field along the stainless steel wire by rearranging the molecular structure of the wire. By recording on the wire, any previous recording is automatically erased, hence the wire can be reused hundreds of thousands of times, or it can be replayed almost indefinitely without loss of fidelity or stored for many years without deterioration. Now, if we keep listening, we can listen to old recordings from the 1940s. They'll come in momentarily.
Wasn't that swell? Well, now, now that we've had the horn playing, uh, we'll have a rendition on the piano by the famous Better Whiskey with his pads on. Oh, uh, render the battle hymn of the Republic. Two stanzas.
car and they can't see why it won't.
Tech refrigerators. Is your refrigerator ready?
the way it is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed hearing those recordings. That um, that's the first time I've heard that far through the tape, except for a little bit on that that song. That's uh, that's a called uh, "How High the Moon." Um, up to the "How High the Moon" song earlier on was how far I've heard it from the start, but. I was just flabbergasted by some of the things I heard on this wire. I can't say heard on this tape, I have to say wire. I was flabbergasted by some of the things I've heard on this wire. Um, for instance, like a lot of this is very historical because you could hear uh, there's a telephone call, some telephone call recordings on the wire and uh, you could literally hear this is back in the day when they had operators. Like the operating ladies at the switchboards and you could hear 721W please or whatever the person said and they would get through and you could hear the uh, from the um, the dial type phones instead of the touch tones of course it was the uh, dialing phones you probably can't see that there we go so you hear the you hear those pulses oh and then I put the, the phone down I heard the sound of the bell that reminds me <laughs> on one of those recordings when the man picked up the phone it was so interesting because on the recording the sound of the bell on his phone ringing just a little bit was picked up by the phone and was on the recording it was just fascinating to hear this fascinating and then the old the old music of the time the kid goofing off oh it's, uh, that got the, they can only count to four and you know like that guy said towards the end and not the end of the wire it was getting towards what I call the turbulent zone of the wire which somewhere mid wire it has full of splices and I just don't want to, to snarl having to splice it again so I just I saw it coming close to that turbulent zone I decided to call it stop so I'm, I will be transferring this wire to probably a cassette and also the computer the entire wire I'll be transferring it directly I hope sometime and perhaps once I have it completely transferred I may upload it to YouTube the um, entire thing that may not be in any time real soon but it will be eventually see there went the wire it just that's what happens sometimes it will
it'll uh, it'll snap. So um, I don't know if the rewind just if the thing didn't stop um, enough. But it was amazing to hear those recordings from this wire. It's just now luckily this the, the part where it snapped. This was earlier. This is um probably during that song. It's actually towards the beginning of the wire. I'm gonna go ahead and splice it um, if I can. Okay. I don't know if I'll be able to show any good showings of this on the video, but I'd like to just have a little video in of showing the actual tying of a, a square knot with the wire. This would probably be one of those things where HD would be uh, desired. Because it's the wire is hair thin. It's it's just so small and delicate. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I know this is a long video, but of course that wire. I imagine there's probably if viewers of this video. I imagine are still watching right now because. I mean I'm sure there must be some viewers that are going to be glued to their seats trying to listen to those uh, old recordings. Like. I mean it's like it's 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 a, it's a time capsule. Even the, I don't know. I wonder if I'm, I'm. I just wonder if the Smithsonian might be interested in the, uh, in those recordings. I don't know. Maybe they'll. they'll maybe they'll be interested um, once I transfer it to uh, the computer, because I plan to do a direct hookup. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to. Uh, I want to pause the video for a second. Okay, you might not be able to see this part very well, and it may more or less be a waste. But I'm going to try to get video of uh, tying a square knot. Of course, I I I never I never tied a square knot before until uh, this wire snapped on me for the first time, and I had to. I looked it up on Google. And it's not too hard once you kind of get the hang of it. Let's see that side went there. Let's see if I remember the steps right. That uh, you can't even see it. So this is, you know, what would be nice is if there was a little pair of glasses that had a built-in camera. So right where you're looking, you could show it. There we go. I know you cannot see that at all. So that part of the video is not even worth. It because you couldn't even see me tie the knot. Kind of hard to get a good grip of the wire to pull the knot tight. It's not didn't even seem to come out that good. I guess I can't tighten it enough. But I cannot even grip the wire that hard because it's so so thin. I need to clip off the excess wire. Might have had something wrong in my technique this time. Get the wire threaded in. Oh, part. Okay, I'm going to try snipping off the ends now. Or no, I didn't even tie it right, I don't think. Let's just clip these out. I might have done one part wrong. I tied it right to the other couple of, or three times I did it, though. Um, let's see here. It might be right. Let's try to thread this back on the machine here. Oh yes, a couple of things I want to show you. Hear that clicking sound? When there's a wire touching in the head groove, it completes a circuit which activates a relay, which enables the rewind and fast forward to operate. That way, 
if you get if you rewinding or fast forwarding and your wire snaps or something and comes off the head it will automatically stop the machine and hopefully everything will go fine there. I'm going to manually turn this because um, it's a little... okay there we go. Oh, let's try playing. Again, electronic music on wire. Another feature I'd like to show I might not demonstrate it because I'm just afraid the wire is going to snap again if I try to demonstrate it. But you'll see across the timer section. Here is the here's the part you can set manually. Also the part that moves gosh dang it moves across the scale as it runs. Then there's this little part here. You can unscrew and move across, and there's one on the other side. These are set places where you can set it to stop. There's little electrical contacts in there, so say your set place is over at 30. Sorry. Say your set place is at 30, your thing will run, and once it gets to 30, it will automatically stop. Same, I think, if you go down to the other side while rewinding, it goes to this point, it will automatically stop. Five, Mark, testing dynamic microphone. Nine, short before 2010 began, because it was during uh, Christmas break when visiting my uncle and cousins there. Anyway. Testing, one, two, three. One last recording on the wire before I go. I'm going to sh send a shout out to the Real Master and Clyde Sight and Spats Bear and Emerson Collie and the Musician Returns and uh, Max Arcade and uh, the 8 Track Chap and any others out there. Shout out to you guys. Uh, Elton and Laura fan. Uh, all you guys out there. Shout outs to you. Anna, All American Five Radio. Don't forget him. Signal is con. What? Yes. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Ah! Shocked by 120 volts. Thank you very much. And let's do this now. Uh, Elton and Laura fan. Didn't rewind enough. One last recording on the wire before I go. I'm going to sh send a shout out to the Real Master and Clyde Sight and Spats Bear and Emerson Collie and the Musician Returns and uh, Max Arcade and uh, the 8 Track Chap and any others out there. Shout out to you guys. Uh, Elton and Laura fan. Uh, all you guys out there. Shout outs to you. And uh, All American Five Radio. Don't forget him. Her voice signal is converted to an electrical impulse. The Manuscriber Deluxe by Standard Business Machines, Model 160, Wire Recorder from the 1940s. I hope you enjoyed this video. It has been a great thing to be able to get this machine working. I had to trust in the Lord on this one because it was relays. Some of the relays had, I was worried it may have gotten messed up at one point. But the Lord gave me a good chance and he helped me with getting this machine working. You can't even, oh, you can see now. 
I need to get my brother a pair of pliers to borrow for building his 3D printer. So here's the pliers. He'll be able to be using these in the making of his 3D printer. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's fascinating to be able to hear these old recordings um, from the wire because it's if you're collecting recorders, it's fair, fairly common to find 1960s reel-to-reel portables. You have old recordings on it from the 60s. And it's cool and all, but in the 1940s, most people didn't have recording machines. So to hear recordings from the 40s is a whole new dimension. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.